Do you have blepharitis? Blepharitis is a super common problem that can cause things like dry eye, irritation, even red eyes. But for years, there's been no cure. Well, about five years ago, something new called micro blepher exfoliation came onto the market. Is it the cure for blepharitis? In today's video, we're gonna find out. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm ocular disease trained and I specialize in dry eye. On this channel, I post educational videos about eye care and vision products. I also work in an office where there's a train station, a police station, a fire station, an ambulance, and construction workers next door, so bear with me. There are some helpful show notes down in the description, so make sure to check those out. Today we're going to talk about blepharitis as well as one of the cures for blepharitis, or is it, micro exfoliation. So my pupils, get out your pens, it's time for eye school. Today we're going to discuss what is blepharitis and then we'll go over the traditional treatments, what we've had for the last 25 years in order to take care of it. Then I'm going to tell you all about micro exfoliation and what it treats. We're going to talk about how it helps, how it may help in your situation. Some other treatments that we might group in or bundle along with microblepher exfoliation. And then we'll finish with the intended outcome of the procedure and what you can expect in terms of follow-up. So we're going to talk about blepharitis. Blepharitis is extremely common. In one study, air, air care providers in one study, eye care providers said that they estimated seeing it in between 40 and 50%, I think it was actually 37 and 47% of their patients. But that means almost one in three or one in two patients have some blepharitis. Blepharitis, we know, contributes greatly to ocular surface disease and um, dry eye type of symptoms. So having blepharitis, we know, is impacting the ocular surface. So what is it? Well, there's a couple of different kinds. So anterior blepharitis refers to lid inflammation, scales or crusty appearance to the lids. Um, it's caused by an accumulation of bacteria and dead skin cells. I tell my patients it's a lot like having dandruff on your scalp. For whatever reason, and it's not because you're dirty or not cleaning appropriately, but it's truly because of your skin type itself. For whatever reason, with blepharitis, patients tend to accumulate dead skin cells in their eyelashes. Those dead skin cells are full of bacteria because remember, you have staph living on your skin and strep living on your skin. And so naturally those um, dead skin cells are gonna be full of bacteria. Having that trapped bacteria on the lashes, on the lid margin causes inflammation. And that's where we see scaling and crusting and inflammation of the lid margin itself. And then that causes diminished capability of the lids to do what they're supposed to do. Meaning, now we start to see dry eye and ocular surface problems from that blepharitis. All of this bacterial activity on your eyelids, setting up camp, setting up shop, doing their thing, that ends up causing a biofilm. What's a biofilm? You already know what a biofilm is. You get them on your teeth all the time. We brush morning, and night and after we eat, but guess what? You still have to go to the dental hygienist about every six months or so to get any excess plaque taken off of your teeth. That's exactly like what happens on the eyelid margin. All those bacteria, just like in your mouth, right? Bacteria are around. All those bacteria on the lid margin, especially if they're getting trapped there, are contributing to a biofilm. And we're understanding more and more that that biofilm is a huge issue in dry eye and ocular surface disease. So that's anterior blepharitis. Think about anterior blepharitis as being, you know, anterior means more forward, and that's gonna be those skin cells, those, um, we call them collarettes, dead, dead skin cells and um, scales and things like that in the lashes themselves. 
Posterior blepharitis happens on the posterior aspect of the lid margin. So that's gonna be your actual meibomian glands. I've talked a ton about meibomian glands in different videos. I'll link one up above. But meibomian gland inflammation is also very, very common. The meibomian glands are responsible for producing a layer of oil that coats your tears and helps enhance your tears, keep them from evaporating. And so um, clogging up and issues in the meibomian glands are not good for your ocular surface. This can often be due to rosacea. We know that rosacea increases the incidence of posterior blepharitis. So traditionally, for the last 25 years, the only methods we had to treat blepharitis were artificial tears, lid scrubs, warm compresses, and occasionally we'd throw an antibiotic on there when the bacteria got out of control. But there was little change for 25 years. All of those methods I just mentioned are ineffective at breaking up bacterial biofilms. So biofilms are a collective of one or more types of microorganisms that grow on a surface. These bacteria that attach to surfaces tend to arrange in a polymeric, a hydrated polymeric matrix of their own synthesis. So they start to film, they start to form their own film. And that film can be with one bacteria or many, many types. Bacterial overgrowth then leads to something called quorum sensing. Quorum sensing is responsible for the production of pro-inflammatory mediators, cytokines, exotoxins, as well as attracting neutrophils to the area. All of the things I just mentioned are very inflammatory. So blepharitis, bacteria at the lid margin ends up forming a biofilm and that biofilm starts having its own little environment happen and attracting inflammation, causing inflammation. So you can see why it would be a good thing to get rid of the biofilm. And in fact, that's something we think we've been missing for the last 25 years. We've just been trying to put in artificial tears, make the eye feel better, cleanse it the best we could, but we haven't been addressing the biofilm. And we're thinking that that's why, you know, if you suffer from blepharitis and you have for years, you know that it just kind of goes on and on and on and there's not much that really gives a ton of relief. So if your artificial tears and your lid scrubs and your warm compresses are failing, then you may have a biofilm issue. So how can we get rid of biofilms? Well, the answer to that is micro blepharo exfoliation. So micro means small, blepharo refers to the lid margin, and exfoliation means we're using a high powered, high turn piece of equipment that's going to really exfoliate that lid margin. If you're into skincare, you're no stranger to exfoliation and the benefits that that has for skincare, you're making your skin better able to absorb actives and different things and moisturizers. But the same is true of your lid margin, right? We're trying to exfoliate that area, get rid of the biofilm so that you can make good tears again. All right, so there's two commercially available micro blepharo exfoliation units. The first to come out was called Blefex, and then there was one that's very similar called AB Max that came out a couple of years after that. These devices are super similar in appearance and super similar in function and form, and that may explain why one of them is currently unavailable. The AB Max is in a patent dispute with Blefex currently. Be that as it may, these are still the two devices that are gonna accomplish micro blepharo exfoliation. Both of these devices are gonna be equally um, able to disrupt that biofilm and your doctor may have either one. So these have a PVA or sponge tip. Um, what actually happens, I don't have the tip here, but it's, this is called an elder brush. It's like a tiny little drill. There's a sponge attachment to it, and it rotates at about 2,000 revolutions per minute. So we're able to cleanse the lash margin kind of over and over. In order to remove dirt and debris, expose the biofilm, and break through it, your doctor will use a commercial preparation of eyelid scrub. And depending on the doctor, that could be any eyelid scrub. You don't have to use a certain kind with this. So if you have dry eye, known blepharitis, you're going in for this treatment, 
you have sensitivities to certain lid scrubs, you definitely want to tell your doctor that because they can perform microblepher exfoliation with the lid cleanser of your choice. So on a macro level, microblepher exfoliation is removing the fibrinous debris at the lash margin. It's getting rid of the oily scales that may be due to seborrheic blepharitis. It's getting rid of the demodex cylindrical kind of dandruff or cuff around lashes. We're actually removing that as well as any meibomian plugs. So if your glands are really plugged up, it's removing the plug off the top. But on a micro level, <laughs> you okay? On a micro level, microblepher exfoliation is breaking up that biofilm and the associated exotoxins that are doing so much harm at the lash margin. It's reducing the bacteria below those quorum sensing levels so that you're not attracting so much inflammation, exotoxins, and you know, you're just disrupting that biofilm so you can have a healthy, normal lid margin again. So let me show you a video of exactly how this microblepher exfoliation procedure works. Right here we have that sponge tip. You see the doctor is using um, a lid cleanser of their choosing. Prior to the treatment, we had lids that were all cruddy. We had a lot of meibomian caps. See those right there. And then as we're cleaning, going along the lid margin, what you'll see happen is a cleanliness to the lids. All these little de this debris that was in the lashes is now gone and those glands look healthy again. Okay, so you're sold. You've suffered with blepharitis. You've done the artificial tears. You've done the lid scrubs and nothing's working. You want to get microblepher exfoliation done. Here's what you can expect at your appointment. You'll go in to see your doctor and have a pre-treatment assessment and potentially before photos so that you can see the difference in before and after treatment. Your doctor will educate you about the procedure, give you an idea what to expect. It does take about five minutes per eye, but the doctor may spend more or less time as is necessary. It just sort of depends on your blepharitis situation. There's a pre-treatment topical anesthetic applied, and I always do that for my patients to make it a little bit more comfortable. I wouldn't call this an uncomfortable procedure, but we are using that sponge tip along your actual eyelid, and so it's just helpful to have a little bit of anesthetic involved. Treatment takes about five minutes per eye. Like I said, your doctor may spend more or less time depending on the state of your eyelids, but that's about, about normal to do about five minutes per eye. After the treatment, I like to take a look, just do a quick post-treatment evaluation and some post-treatment photos so we can really see that improvement between before and after. There's really no follow-up. There's no, uh, well, there's follow-up because your doctor will want to see how you did. Um, but in terms of like having to be on a drop or something afterward, typically that is not necessary. I could see if your doctor felt like they really disturbed your eyelids a great deal or if there was risk of infection, they may give you an antibiotic or steroid. That is totally gonna depend on the situation as so many things do in dry eye. I really wanted you to have the feel of like, and really immerse ourselves, have an immersive experience. And so, you know, the dentist office drilling that's going on next door, just kidding, that's construction. But yeah, it really, it really sets the mood, sets the idea that we're breaking up biofilms. I like it. All right, so let's talk about some potential paired treatments that your doctor might recommend, might advise for you. So we talked a little bit about blepharitis and how there's anterior and posterior and the biofilm and we're breaking that up with microblepharo exfoliation. A logical next step, a logical conclusion after that is now that you've removed the biofilm, why don't we do something for the blocked meibomian glands? So if you do suffer from that anterior and posterior blepharitis, it is well within reason to pair an external heat therapy with meibomian gland expression following the microblepher exfoliation procedure. So in my office, I do tear care, and I'll link the video up above where I explain tear care. Um, but tear care is external heat therapy for a duration of 15 minutes. It's a controlled warm compress, and I express the glands after. But there are two other options. So one of the options your doctor might talk about is the Ilux. 
Ilox is a device that heats the glands and your doctor expresses them. It's a handheld heat and expression tool. It's quite popular and if your doctor has it, yes, it is a really great alternative to tear care or lipoflow. The other one is the old standby. Lipoflow has been out longer than either of the other two. Um, it is heat plus massage. There's an actual like cup or um, you know, thing that goes on your eye where heat and massage happens at the exact same time. The other two are really not as customizable. The reason I have tear care, I love that it's so customizable. So we heat up those glands, and if your lid tends to be really clogged in one area or another, I can spend more time and, and kind of give more love to that gland and get the oil to come out. So just keep in mind, if you're going to ask your doctor about microblepher exfoliation for your blepharitis, they may offer you one of these procedures as well. And I do feel that they're a really good way to clear out your meibomian glands um, and further increase your good tears. We really wanna work on that lid, decrease inflammation, normalize your, um, your oil secretion and get your tears working like they should again. And finally, I have a little teaser because microblepher exfoliation is no longer the only thing that can be used to break up the biofilm. He literally just got beer. There is beer and dentistry and carpentry happening next door. <laughs> All right, so we've got one other way to exfoliate the lid margin, break up that biofilm, and get your blepharitis under control. It's a difference between having a mechanical exfoliant, which is what we just talked about with Blefex and AB Max, the PVA sponge, rotating fast. That's mechanical debridement, mechanical exfoliation. We now have a chemical option. There's something called Zest. It's an in-office treatment using okra-based products. And you can look for a video about that coming very soon, but I thought it was enough to do its own video on. So we'll do that very soon. Um, thank you as always for watching, for sticking with me through the drilling, the beer, the gallivanting. I don't even know. We got noisy neighbors, folks. We post videos every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. So make sure to tune in, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Never miss a video. It's a fun time. I'll see you next time.